At a spending review, the Chancellor of the Exchequer sets out the government's plans for public spending. They're important fiscal events, with decisions made over hundreds of billions of pounds of public money. But they're also important political events, as governments set out their relative priorities and allocate funding towards achieving their policy objectives. Today, I'm launching the next spending review to conclude in July, setting out detailed spending plans for the Parliament. This is a big spending review by a government that does big things. It's a long-term economic plan for our country's future. The first spending review was held by Gordon Brown in 1998, and they've been adopted as a tool by all chancellors since. Cash spending limits are set for departments, typically for three or four years at a time. They're intended to be firm and fixed, the idea being that by guaranteeing departments level of funding for a few years at a time, this provides public service leaders with a solid base on which they can plan their operations. For instance, if a head teacher is deciding whether or not to take on a new member of staff, having some certainty of the school's future budget might make that decision easier. But spending reviews don't cover the entirety of government spending. The total amount of money that the government spends is called Total Managed Expenditure, or TME. The portion of spending that the government tries to control on a multi-year basis, with budget set at spending reviews, is called Departmental Expenditure Limits, or DEL. In 2019-20, this amounted to around 42% of total spending. You could broadly think about this as spending by central government departments on public services. Things like the NHS, schools, the police and the court system all fall within Departmental Expenditure Limits, or DEL. Departmental budgets are then separated in two, into resource and capital budgets. Resource DEL, which represents 36% of total government spending, and 84% of total DEL, covers the day-to-day -day running and administration costs of public services. This includes things like the cost of employing teachers, doctors and prison officers. Capital DEL, which amounts to about 7% of total government spending and 16% of DEL, covers money spent building or maintaining government assets, such as roads and buildings. These budgets are planned and managed separately to prevent departments from dipping into the capital budgets to meet short-term pressures on day-to-day -day expenditure. The remaining 58% or so of spending is classified as Annually Managed Expenditure, or AME. This encompasses much spending that's more difficult to plan or is outside of central government's immediate control. The government argues that this spending cannot reasonably be subject to firm multi-year limits because it includes spending items that are sensitive to the economic cycle, like debt interest payments and social security spending, and it includes spending by local or devolved governments, financed through the taxes that those governments control. Annually managed expenditure, or AME, typically falls outside the scope of spending reviews. So, when it comes to a spending review, the focus is on spending on public services. Unlike at a budget, no decisions are taken over taxes, although perhaps confusingly, a budget and a spending review are sometimes published at the same time. At the spending review, the Chancellor stands up in the House of Commons and sets out departmental budgets, split into resource and capital, sometimes for as many as four years, as was the case in 2010 and 2015, sometimes for as few as one, as was the case in 2013, 2019 and 2020. These plans are supposed to be firm and fixed, but in practice, they're often chopped and changed. In the 2000s, when tax reviews came in higher than expected, Gordon Brown topped up his spending plans. In the 2010s, when tax revenues came in weaker than expected, George Osborne cut his back. But theoretically, at least, the spending review sets out a firm path for departmental spending. But not all departments get treated equally. Since 2010, the pattern has been for the Department of Health, now the Department of Health and Social Care, to receive above inflation budget increases albeit at a slower rate than has been the case historically, while almost everything else has been cut. This was part of the government's plan to squeeze public spending in order to try to reduce government borrowing. It meant that in per-person terms, day-to-day -day public service spending, or resource DEL, was cut by 13% between 2009-10 and 2019-20. But once we strip out health, per-person spending was cut by 25% over that decade. Some areas, like the Ministry of Justice, grants to local authorities were cut by even more. Depending on the choices made in the years to come, some public services could be facing another bout of austerity. The decisions made in the spending review can have important consequences for the economy, for the public finances, and for the public services on which we all rely. To look behind the headlines and get objective, independent analysis, visit www.ifs.org.uk.